I'm going to talk to, um, a bit about um, how the Open Cloud is now by analyzing the four major uh, Open Cloud projects. Um, I'm here talking mainly about, about infrastructure. So the structure of the talk is, um, after some introduction, I'm going to uh, briefly talk about uh, the source code that these projects are producing. Then I'm going to talk about the process they are using to produce it. And then I'm talking, going to talk about the community. From my point of view, the community part is the most, the most interesting one. So if you want some coffee, well, you can leave, come back in 15 minutes, that's fine. So uh, the context. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Viterja right now. It's a small company doing uh, software analytics and development processes, which is a bit different from traditional software analytics. What we do is to provide, to produce reports, test boards, et cetera, to better understand how free software is being produced. So the idea is to analyze the community, to analyze the processes, to analyze what's happening in the repositories in the end. But I, I also have a university hat. I, I've been working in uh, Universidad de Juan Carlos for several years, trying to understand how free software is produced. Well, these are the projects I'm going to talk about. Uh, these are probably the, the, four, the four largest uh, or well-known or more popular, whichever uh, open cloud uh, projects right now when we're talking about infrastructure. Uh, no particular order, really no particular order. So the idea is just to show information about them. This is not exactly a comparison. So all of them are different. And um, really, you cannot compare them on a one-by-one -one basis. So the idea is to uh, try to explain how they are. And in fact, the, the slides are not going to show comparison except for the first one, because I guess that it, produce, it gives you uh, a lot of context. But for the rest, I'm going to try to show this is like this, the next one is like this, the next one is like this. So you can do the comparisons in your mind if those are important for you. So um, uh, all of them are sort of similar in functionality. If you, if you look at the functionality they claim, it's quite similar in many cases. There are differences, of course. They are sort of in the same domain, but they are not exactly the same. And those differences could be important. And you have to have that into, in, into account when you look at, at the rest of the numbers. All of them are free open source software, but they have different licenses. They have a different business model. They have different languages. I'm mean, talking about programming languages. A different uh, 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 ways of doing the thing. I mean, different uh, processes for producing the software. All of them are popular, but of course, they have different market shares, different support by companies, uh, and different targets even. So now, how about the study? The focus, as I said, is in, on, on how these uh, projects are developing. So I'm going to start by talking a bit about the source code. This is quite typical. I'm going to talk uh, about size, about languages, usage, sub, that kind of stuff. Probably you are already familiar with that because those numbers are well known. Uh, then I'm going to start to talk a bit about processes, basically about activity, and uh, uh, what's happening in uh, the ticketing system, for instance. And um, I'm going to finish by talking about the community, which, as I said, is from my point of view, the most interesting part of, 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 the, of the analysis. We didn't analyze functionality. There are a lot of studies out there analyzing the, the, the different functionality of them. We didn't um, talk about performance as runtime performance. We are going to talk a bit about performance from the uh, uh, um, uh, process management uh, point of view. And we are not doing, going to talk about popularity. For each of the projects, you have a dashboard that you can get online. By the way, I forgot to mention that all the slides are online. If you look at the Twitter timeline for this uh, session, Open Cloud 14, you can find the link to the slides. And the slides, you can click and go to the, to the different dashboards and so on and get much more detail. So the dashboards look like this. So this is the entry page. But then you, can, you have a menu at the top where you can drill down many details. So I'm not going to enter into what it chart means, because I'm going to go for that later. But basically, you're going to find panels with numbers and charts. Charts are usually evolution of uh, some metrics. And, and, and numbers are giving you some insight on the, on the main parameters of the project. So this one is for Open Nebula. And here you can start realizing the differences. On the left, basically, you have a very brief description of the development community. Number of co-developers, for instance, that's people authoring in the Git repositories. And ticket participants, that's people participating either in opening, modifying the state, or closing the state of tickets. So you can, you can focus on that if you want. I will come to, back to that later. This is, this is Open Nebula. Uh, then you have Eucalyptus. So you can see there are some differences. You can also look at the trends. The trends are showing whether the, the given parameter is, is going up, is going down, it's keeping it stable, whichever. 
you also have cloud stack, again different numbers, and you can you can you can look at open stack again different numbers, probably different trends. Uh, go to the dashboard later if you want and, and, dig down, uh, and, and drill down into this because this is just the, the main summary. But let, let, let's go to the meat. So first of all, we did a transparency analysis. What's that? When we are talking about free software, you know that we are really talking about licenses. And that the project is free software or open source software doesn't mean that the, info, that the information for the development process is available. Fortunately, in these four cases, the information is available. So we found out that we could do the analysis, which is the first thing. And from my point of view, that's quite important because that means that all those projects are transparent. Transparent in the sense that anyone can go there and do the same analysis that, that we did. If, if you don't like the numbers and you prefer some others, you can go to the repositories, get the information out of them, etc. That's a very interesting way of creating trust. You don't have to uh, trust the vendor or some independent analyst that did some analysis. You can go and look at the numbers yourself if you want. Uh, second, all the code seems to land in Git at some point. I'm, I'm saying that because in some cases you find that uh, the development process seems to be there, but what you really have is a code dump. So the development happens, happens elsewhere, and then from time to time you just move the code to the Git repositories. This is not the case. In all the projects, it seems, by analyzing the Git repositories and the ticket repositories, that the real story is there, except for maybe the ticketing system. For the ticketing system, in the case of OpenStack and Cloudest, I'm pretty much sure that everything is happening there. For uh, Open Nebula and Eucalyptus, by looking at the numbers, so maybe there are some other uh, uh, ticket repositories, maybe for, for customers or whichever. So let's start with the numbers. So first of all, the, the source code. This is the, the raw numbers of line counts that are well known, I guess, and many of you probably know. So the most interesting thing here probably is the difference between Open Nebula and the other three. Uh, and you can, you can see that it's like an order of, of magnitude. Remember that all of them are claiming similar functionality, not exactly the same, blah, 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 but quite, quite similar. Um, the, the, the ratio of code comments is quite similar too. That's also interesting because that means that the uh, coding uh, uh, policies, I mean, commenting policies in the code are, are similar. And I would say that in general terms, that, that's a good metric when you compare it to other projects uh, in terms of how many comments they have. But remember that these metrics, you have to, to be careful, for instance, licensing these comments. So um, when we came to languages, we also find a lot of differences between the different projects. So this is Open Nebula. In Open Nebula, you can see that it's basically JavaScript, C++, Ruby, and some other things. Okay? When, you, when you move to, to Eucalyptus, it's basically XML, and then Java, JavaScript, XML, Python, blah, blah, blah. The most interesting thing here is the diversity in languages that you find in the repository. So compared to the others, this has much more languages involved. I mean, with a, with a, re, with a sustainable part of the, of, the, of the code. Both Cloud Stack and OpenStack are almost a single language thing. In the case of, of, of um, Cloud Stack, it's basically Java. You have some Python. You have some XML and some other things, but you can see that most of the code is Java. And in the case of OpenStack, it's basically Python. And then you have, of course, some XML, some JavaScript. Some JavaScript you always have because you have web front ends that are using uh, JavaScript. And in fact, if you look at, at all, all these three projects, the, the amount of JavaScript is, is quite similar. But um, being these two uh, single language projects, to, to say it that way, makes them different from the other two where you saw um, a certain mixture of, of languages. And now let's go to the, to the process. So this is activity. Uh, for now, forget a bit about the left part because I'm going to enter into uh, more detail later and focus on the right. On the right, you have commits and close tickets. So the, the interesting thing here is uh, that the magnitude, I mean the size and the trend. Here, probably you cannot see from your sheet, but commits uh, it's it range from 0 to, 40, to, four, to 400. So that's the number of commits per month for that project, for, 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 for Open Nebula. Remember, the maximum is 400. Uh, closed tickets, you can see that's a bit more variant, but it's, it's around 50 per month. So that's the number of tickets they are closing in the public repository. They could have another one, as I said. This is Eucalyptus. Here, the number of commits per month it's in the order of from 0 to 2,000. So the mean is around 500 to 1,000, depending on the, on the month. So 
you can see there are more, more commits. That's what's enabled because there, are, there, there is some more code too. And it's uh, related to the, the size of the community, uh, as we will be seeing later. Uh, tickets is, are a bit strange. So this is one of the reasons why I think that they have a different uh, uh, ticketing system somewhere else, probably for customers. Because uh, you can see how, well, there are some spikes and so on, but the, the, the general level of uh, closed tickets is very, very slow, very, very low. So it's like uh, five some months, for instance. So This is Cloud Stack. You can see a, a new level of activity. He, it's around 1,000 commits per month. It's very flat in general. And you have closed tickets. If you uh, forget about that spike, it's around 100, 150 per month. So it, it seems that all the activities is, is taking place here. And then if you go to OpenStack, you can notice the trend and you can notice the size. So it's uh, between uh, 500 and 1,000 per month. Right now it's pretty close to 1,000 many of the months, not exactly, but very close. And in tickets, you can see it's around, right now it's around 250 per month too. Um, drilling down a bit with tickets, here you have tickets opened versus tickets closed. So uh, uh, green is ticket open, uh, blue is ticket closed. You can see how in the case of Open Nebula, both lines are very close to each other. So they are basically open and closed tickets, uh, sort of at, at the same rate. This is a bit different. So you can see how there is a spike in opening tickets, uh, then there is a spike in closing, but later, and well, there is some follow-up, and then now the thing is starting to diverge again. Uh, remember one important thing. Closing tickets doesn't mean fixing tickets. In some cases, you can just close, forget. So I'm not, I'm not presenting that part of the study. I have the numbers, but then I'm presenting that part of, of the study. Uh, this is CloudStack. Here you have a similar uh, thing. You can follow the two lines. The interesting thing here is that you can see green lines are tickets, tickets open. Blue is ticket closed, remember, remember. So you can see that difference, right? So that's the difference between what it's been open and it's been, it's been closed. It seems that from time to time they have a spike like that one, which is basically closing more tickets that are open during that period. And this is OpenStack. In OpenStack you have more activity, and you, have, you can see how up to around early uh, 2013, both lines are very closed, but then they are starting to divert. So they are starting to have more open tickets at closed tickets per month, right? Okay, let's go now to the community, which is the, the last part of the presentation. Um, first of all, the size. Now let's focus on this left part they have omitted up to now. So there you can look at different numbers for the community. The, the upper part is commits, basically. But we are looking at authors. If you, if you now get the difference between commit, uh, committer and author, committer is the one putting the commit actually in the repository, and author is the one, let's say, originally writing the patch. Not always, because you can change that in the process, but usually that corresponds to the one uh, committing the original patch, so the author of the code. So uh, the, the raw number, 52, for instance, means the total number of people that we have found in the repository. We are, look, we are running some heuristics for trying to find unique identities. I mean, people, for instance, committing with similar addresses, but not the same address, or with the same name, but different email addresses, and so on. So we try to identify individuals as much as possible. Uh, but the, the, the numbers below are quite interesting. So what we do is to take all the commits and find out who contributed 80% of those. In that case, in that case there are eight guys, in the case of, uh, of uh, um, Open Nebula. We call that the core development tip. Um, regular means the next 15%, right? And uh, occasional means the last 50, sorry, 5% of contributions. So you can see that the, usually the important people is the core and maybe the regular. With that, you can get an idea of what's happening in the project. When we look later at the company analysis, you are going to understand this very, very quickly. Uh, in the case of tickets, we have the total number of people, as I said, participating in the ticketing system, either opening, changing state, or closing ticket. And then here you have the number of fixers. Fixers, we consider those closing tickets as fixed, right? This is usually the number of developers involved in the, um, 
in the system because those are the ones that can't really fix the bags, let's say it that way. So in this case, it's the same number. That's, that's not necessarily the case, always. And this is the number of people submitting. This number is quite important because it's how much, uh, sorry, how many people took the burden of sending you a back report, basically. So there are more things there, back reports there, but you can, so that's a very rough way of measuring the, let's say, engaged community. So people that probably are not developers, but are bothered by the project enough to submit a bug report, right? And this is mailing lists. For mailing lists, we have the raw number of participants, and then we have those that are initiation, ticket, initiation uh, uh, threads, for instance, making questions or things like that, and the number of people replying. Both are interesting. Well, uh, the first one are basically participating there with usually questions, things like that. The others are usually answering. Not always. You, have, you also have the, the usual, I don't know, project status report or something, which is not a question, but it's in a season of thread. And then you have the trends on the right part, right? Uh, I'm not going to enter into details there, but there you can see for authors, ticket closers, and message posters, uh, whether well, that's increasing, decreasing, staying flat, whichever. This is Eucalyptus. As I said, the community of code developers is higher, but when you came to the core, it's also higher, but not that much higher. And when you look at regular, they have a, a difference with the previous one. They, remember, for a Nebula, they have three regular, and here you have um, uh, much more, and they have much more occasional. That basically means that they are accepting uh, commits for a wider community than the other one. When you came to tickets, well, you have some numbers. As I said, my impression is that they are not that meaningful, so I'm not going to, to discuss them. For this one, unfortunately, we, we don't have data for participation in mailing lists because they are using Google Groups, and Google Groups is something that we currently are not mining. So um, I have no numbers for that. I'm sorry about that. This is Cloud Stack. As I said before, the community is much bigger. When you look at the core, it's not that different, but it's different. You have 33 uh, people in the, core, in the core, and you have a lot of people around too in the next 15%, so 33 in the regular contributors. Remember, this is for the whole history of, uh, of the project. When you come to Ticket Participant, you, can, you have a significantly bigger community of people around that, and you have more than 500 submitters of bug reports, which means the attraction of, let's say, bug reporters is much higher. When you come to discussions, you have, well, a good bunch of people, close to 2,000, participating in the, in the mailing list. I mean, actively participating. And well, below you have the numbers for repliers and first uh, uh, indicators. And for OpenStack, well, you have a large community of developers. You have a large score. But you can also see how the next 15% is, is, is bigger. That means, basically, that they are accepting more small contributions, to say it that way, and then you have a lot of occasional uh, people to contribute into that last 5% of commits. Uh, ticket participants, they have a wider population of people submitting tickets and participating in the ticket process. Basically, almost all developers are there, but that also has to do with the way they develop, so it's very difficult that you are a developer and you are not involved in one ticket at some point. And well, with respect to the mailing lists, they have more, but comparably, it's not that big as difference as for the other communities, if you look at it. And well, then you have some numbers. The trends, in any case, are quite interesting, because uh, remember, this is for the whole history. But if we were analyzing like the, sec the last six months, probably you could see more differences with the other projects. And in part, the next slides are so in that part. Because here you can see the evolution of the core team, those guys producing 80% of the commits. And while well, this is open nebula, you can see how it's ranging from four to five. This is semesters. So the last four semesters starting in the second semester of 2012, up to now, right? This is Eucalyptus. So you can see how they had a maximum, like one year ago, of 19 people. Now they are more close to 13. And this is cloud stack. Here you can see how they're getting up while well, during the last two semesters, that's similar around 30. And this is OpenStack. And that's why I said if we were analyzing in the previous slides only the, the, the last uh, year or six months, probably you could see more differences. Because 
the, the number of developers, and in this case the core, is, is growing very quickly. And this is uh, an analysis of how the population is. So picture is the, the, this way. These are semesters, right? Uh, uh, the, the yellow line or the green line is how many people they attracted that semester. So that means during the last semester, they attracted like 15, uh, sorry, like uh, 15 people. They attracted a bit less than 10 people here, like three people here, and so on. And the blue lines is right now, how many of them are still here? I mean, how many of them are still committing? Because this is for committer, for authors of code. So you can see that for the case of Open Nebula, most of the people with a lot of experience are no longer here, but they are still retaining people with as much as uh, three or four years, almost five years of experience. They are losing a part of the, uh, of the people entering last year, but still they are maintaining, um, well, a community. Uh, remember that this is for all the people contributing. I mean, there are some people with one commit there, so the casual commuter that came once and never came back. So these numbers are not that bad. We can look at some others. This is for Eucalyptus. So here you can see again, remember, the uh, yellow lines is the trend or the, 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 the numbers for attraction, so how many people they are attracting every semester, and the blue lines is retention. So right now, how many of them are still here? So you can see the trend, and you can see how people are still in the period for many of those uh, uh, periods. From, from this, by the way, you can infer uh, how many people with experience in, this, in the system you have. And remember an important thing. Some of the guys that entered maybe four or five years ago, maybe are no longer commuters, but they, maybe they are still related to the project because they could be uh, moved to man management positions, for instance. So it doesn't mean that they are not here. This is just authorship. This is cloud stack. You can see the retention for the last years. It's like around 30 to 40 percent for this year, and like around 30 percent for this one, a bit lower. But they are still keeping very old people on board. And this is OpenStack. So uh, of course, the, the size of the number is much, much, much bigger. They attracted like th 300 people during the last during the last six months. Uh, of the like 500 people, they attracted the semester before, there are still around 300 around. So it's like very close to 50% of retention for, for six months, which is not bad. And you can see how they are sort of, uh, uh, retaining people from the very beginning. The company analysis is a straightforward. What, what, what we do is just go to the repository, look at the guys, and try to identify companies, in part based on email addresses, and in part based on manual inspection. So the idea is we try to identify those with most importance in the repositories. So this is Open Nebula, and you can see that for Open Nebula, this is number the commit of commits per company. You can see that it's basically a model of three companies, which in fact is a university and two companies, which is basically the same thing, because the project was starting as a research project, and then a company was founded. So even when you see three colors there, it's very close to, let's say, one color, or at least the, com the combination of what's happening in the university and in the company. This is the number of organizations contributing per month. So you can see that it's pretty stable at two, basically the company and the university. This is for Eucalyptus, again, a single company project, and you can see it very clearly. There are some spikes because there are some very small contributions by some companies at some points, but that's it. This is CloudStack. It's very close to a single company project, but you have some diversity. And I'm not showing it here, but you can see how the trend is upwards. Remember, this is for all the history. So you can see how during the last month, it's very useful that they have contribution for like five to six companies. So I think it's uh, starting to evolve in the project, or that seems from the numbers. And this is OpenStack. OpenStack is much more, much more diverse in terms of companies. Uh, you can see how still Rocky Space, who started the project, is still the major contributor. If you look at all the history of the project, but you can see how many others came before that. By the way, please don't consider having a m higher number of commits as being more important for the project or something. Commits are commits. So this is just giving you an indication that many companies are working there. And you can see an idea of some of them are contributing a lot, some others are contributing some, some less, but this is not the ranking. Forget a bit about that. But you can have an idea of how diverse the community is by looking at this. By looking at this, you can also see how it's very normal now that they get contributions of 50 companies every month. 
And just the final analysis, time zones. If, uh, probably you know that Git is using the time zone of the uh, computer where the commit is done. So you can use that information to try to infer where people are working in the world. So this is very difficult to get from other part, from other information, because companies usually are spread around the world, and you really don't know where people live. So this is Open Nebula again, and these are time zones. So time zones one and two is basically uh, Europe. Okay. Remember that we have time savings. Those are those are not uh, included here. So basically, that's the same time zone, and that's completely Spain, which is where the company is host. But that's because I know you, can, you cannot infer that from that. This is eucalyptus. And this is minus 8, minus 7. That's west coast. right? If you have the summer time into account, that's basically west coast. You have some others in the, in the, in, in the, in the east coast, some in Europe. This is cloud stack. West coast, east coast, Europe, and India because they have, seem to have a huge developer base in India. And this is OpenStack. You can see West, East Coast, Europe. This is the area around Russia, Middle East, etc. And this is India, this is China, this is Japan, Korea, and Australia, basically. Okay? So you can, you, you can see at how people are a bit more spread in the world. So I'm almost done. So some final considerations. Just remember that you saw many differences in metrics. But this is not something like saying this is good, this is bad. So some, that's something that maybe you can decide. But the important thing is to figure out the differences and having numbers with them. Because on top of that, you can discuss. And maybe you can discuss whether that's important for you as a developer, as a user, as a whatever. And uh, look at the details. So if you want, go to the dashboards and drill down, because you can do that, and get more detail and try to understand, if you want, why the numbers are like they are. So um, for me, the most interesting thing is the open cloud is really open and really transparent. You can do this kind of analysis. Try to do this with proprietary cloud products. So no way. Uh, here you can understand what's happening, who is supporting, who is putting the money, who is developing, uh, how are they dealing with tickets, uh, how is activity evolving, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything you may want. Uh, well, the usual disclaimer, we did our best, some numbers could be wrong, blah, blah, blah. And uh, remember, remember, uh, I forgot an important thing. Two of the uh, uh, projects are customers of the company, so we tried not to have that into account, of course, but well, it's good that, that you know. And you have all the numbers there. If you want, go there. You can download the databases even and do the queries yourself. And if, if any of you want some assistance on that, please drop me an email and uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to collaborate. Thank you very much. <laughs>